But much more interesting than a Markov model for what we're going to do is what's referred to as a hidden Markov model. So here's the basic idea. Suppose you actually can't observe the state, okay? So there's some state doing its thing, but you can't observe it. But what you can observe are what are referred to as observables or the evidence. So let's suppose for the same weather example, okay, let's suppose the things that we can observe are essentially what uh, women of the day happen to be wearing or carrying. So maybe I see this very chic bathing suit on a person, or I see a, just a nice coat that could be worn any time that it was uh, sunny, uh, or uh, an umbrella. So these are the evidence of what the state is. So before I can go further, I have to tell you one more thing about our Markovian system, and that's what's referred to as the emission probabilities. Emission, if you think of it as symbols being spit out. And the emission probabilities are written like this, B sub J of K, and what that means is the probability that you'll see symbol K, that you'll see a bathing suit, given that at some time you're in some particular state. Okay, so what's the probability you'll see a bathing suit given that it's sunny? What's the probability you'd see a bathing suit given that it's snowy? All right, those are called the emission probabilities. And what that means, our entire system when it's running looks like this. In this new system where we can't observe the states, we don't ask questions about the likelihood of having seen a particular sequence of states because we can't see the states. Instead, we're going to ask about the likelihood or the probability of seeing a particular sequence of observations. So that's shown here. So you could say, given this sequence of observation, coat, coat, uh, umbrella, umbrella, bathing suit, umbrella, umbrella, what's the probability of that series, of that sequence of observations? Well, we could evaluate that if you give us everything, right? So here I've just written it out as P of O is this all the sequence of all the observations. And I know the way to, to compute that, and we'll get more of the details later, is I could say, well, if you told me the sequence of states, then I could tell you the probability of a given observation. And if I multiplied that by the probability of that sequence, I could get the whole thing. So one simple example is, well, one possible sequence of states, just one, is that it's all sun, right? And that can be determined from the yellow stuff here, right? right? So it's the probability that I start with sun, 0.7, right there, and then I follow that with a whole bunch of sun, 0.8, 0 0.5, right? All, east, all sunny days. So this is the probability of all sunny days, and this would be the probability of seeing this sequence if every day was sunny, right? So the coat, it's a 0.3 probability. Uh, uh, there's four uh, umbrellas, and there's only a 10% chance of seeing an umbrella when it's sunny. Notice, by the way, I wrote 0.1 to the 4 here. The order doesn't matter, right? Because I'm assuming that if you tell me the state, that I can tell you the probability of, being, of, of having an umbrella. It doesn't matter what the day before or the day after was. You tell me that it's, that it's raining, I can tell you the probability that they're carrying an umbrella. But this was only for one particular sequence of all sun. You have to worry about all possible sequences of weather over those seven days to talk about the probability of getting this one series. So to make that a little clearer and a little easier, let's just do the math. 